شهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد The world in which we live in this present world is a material world with all of its pleasures and enjoyments However, most people, they're deluded by it. They're deceived by it, not realizing that this material world and its enjoyments and its pleasures will one day suddenly come to an end. And so that happens. That happens when our soul leaves our body. And so when that happens, we leave this present material world. But we don't leave it. We don't leave it to enter into nothingness. But rather, we leave it to enter into another world that is different from this world. And that is the world of the Barzakh. And so, the world of the unseen, the world of the ghaib, is a real world, unlike this present material world. And we know that it's real, not because anyone alive has seen it, nor because science has somehow discovered it, but rather we know of its reality because a sadiq al masduq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The truthful one who never ever told a lie in his life, 
He is the one who told us about it. And so what exactly happens? What exactly happens when we depart this world to enter into the world of the Barzakh? First and foremost, when a person dies, he becomes exposed to what was hidden from him in this present world. And so just like when you are asleep and you wake up from your sleep, you did not know what was going on around you until you wake up. Just like someone in a coma or someone who goes unconscious or he's drugged and he doesn't have any senses and he doesn't know what's going on around him. He only comes to know when he wakes up. And so the reality is that right now, most of us are asleep and will only come to wake up when it's too late. And that is when we leave this world and we enter into that, into that world. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تحيد. And the horrors and the pains of death are real and they're going to come. And that is what you try to evade. And then later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا You are in a state of heedlessness about this. About this day, the day of judgment. You were heedless about it, living your life, having forgotten about this reality. And so on that day, Allah says, we will lift the veil from your sight, from your eyes. And so on this day, your sight will be sharp. And so what that means is that in this present world, we live in heedlessness. We live in heedlessness. We have a veil over our eyes preventing us from being conscious about life after death. And for some, that veil will never be lifted until it's too late, until the Day of Judgment. The very first thing the very first thing that we will come to realize is that time is up. And so time as we know it, in its seconds, in its minutes, in its days, in its months, in its years, we recognize time. We measure it. We calculate it. When a person departs from this world, there is no more meaning to time as we know it. There is no more meaning to time as we know it. Because from then onwards, it's a life of eternity. Not measured by time. Not calculated by time as we know it, even if it be centuries or millennia. It's perpetual. It's never ending. And so today we have time. But that time is quickly running out. And so the clock is ticking. At that time, when we have departed from this world, we will be one of two people. We will be one of two people. The Prophet wasallam said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. That whoever loves to meet his Lord, then Allah loves to meet him. وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ And whoever dislikes and doesn't want to meet Allah, then Allah also doesn't want to meet that person. At that time, you will be Either one of two people. Either one. 
who was in a prison. And now he becomes free to enjoy himself. Or one who was already free, enjoying himself. And now he's going to be shackled and, and be taken to prison. The Prophet wasallam said, القبر روضة من رياض الجنة وحفرة أو حفرة من حفر النار that the grave it is either a garden from the gardens of Jannah or it is a pit from the pits of the hellfire secondly we have several ahadith in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Explain to us in detail exactly what goes on in the grave from the time a person departs from this world, from the time his soul departs from his body, until the time that Allah will resurrect you from your grave. And so, among that which the Prophet ﷺ told us is that after you are buried, and your relatives and your loved ones and your friends leave you there having buried you. You can hear their footsteps as they walk away. And then, once you're all alone, two angels, they come to you. And they sit you up. And they ask you three questions. They ask you, who was your Lord? What was your religion? And who was this man among you? In other narrations, who was your prophet? And so the Prophet ﷺ told us that the believer will respond positively. He'll answer each of these questions correctly. Not because he had knowledge of it, theoretical knowledge only, but because he had knowledge of it and he put that knowledge into practice. On the other hand, the disbeliever and the hypocrite and the fajr, the wicked person, he won't be able to answer these questions even if he knew, even if he knew them and he knew their answers theoretically. Why? Because he didn't act by them. And so the Prophet ﷺ told us that as for the believer, once he answers correctly, a window will open up for him and he will see his place in Jannah. And he'll start receiving some of its rewards. He'll smell some of its fragrance. He'll be clothed in, he'll be clothed in some of its clothing. As for the one who is destined for the hellfire, a window will be opened up for him showing his place in the hellfire. And some of its heat and some of its punishment will reach him while he is in his grave. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says that whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would finish burying a dead person, he would stand over his grave and he would address his companions and he would tell them, Seek forgiveness for your brother right now. And ask Allah to keep him firm right now because he is about to be questioned. On that day, on that first night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the believers firm and steadfast. And he grants them strength. يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة. Allah keeps firm those who believed with the firm word, the kalima of a tawheed, with their iman. Allah keeps them firm في الحياة الدنيا in this life as well as في الآخرة in the آخرة in the hereafter. And the scholars of tafsir they say. What this refers to is that first night when you're in your grave and the two angels come to you 
and they ask you these questions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps you firm and grants you strength because of your iman and because of your good deeds. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim aqulu ma tasma'un wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dhanbin wa khati'ah فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعويما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وإخوانه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في السر والنجوى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون O oh, you who believe, fear Allah Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let each and every single soul look to what he has sent forward for his tomorrow meaning for his akhirah. My dear brothers and sisters, a hundred years from now, each and every single one of us will no longer be here. Each and every single one of us, along with our loved ones, will not be on the surface of the earth, but rather below the surface of the earth. We will be in our graves, and our eternal fate will have become crystal clear before our eyes. A hundred years from now, whatever we have left behind in this dunya, our houses that we work so hard to build, will be resided in by strangers. Our businesses will be owned and run by others. A hundred years from now, our names and our looks will be for, forever forgotten. No one will remember us. How many of us Today, remember our great-grandparents. Barely anyone. And so why is it? Why is it that we spend so much time concerned about how others look at us and we forget about how Allah looks at us? Why is it that we busy our lives concerned about our wealth, about our possessions, about our properties? When a hundred years from now, in our graves, none of that will be of any concern to us. Our existence, our existence in this life is nothing but the passing of a few moments. It's nothing but the passing of a few moments in the grand scheme of things. Tens of hundreds of generations have already passed behind us. Likewise, tens of hundreds of generations will come after us. Your life on this earth 
is nothing but the passing of a few moments. From the time Allah created Adam until the last man to walk the face of the earth. Ask yourself, what is your existence in that span of time? Except nothing but a few moments. In the darkness and in the loneliness of our graves, we will come to realize how worthless this dunya was that we chased after all our lives. And we would wish that we had instead spent our lives planting the seeds for our next life. Especially certain good deeds like as al jariya Perpetual, continuous charity. Why? Because that benefits you when you're in your grave. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقُنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْلَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ and spend out of what we have granted you. Before a time comes when death comes to one of you and he says, Ya Rabb, delay it for me. Delay this death for me so that I could go back and spend and give in some sadaqah and be one of the righteous. The scholars say, why is it that Allah mentioned sadaqah out of all of the good deeds? Because when you're in your grave, you see the fruits of your sadaqah more than anything else. In the loneliness and the darkness of our graves, we will come to realize how true the words of Allah were when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتُ Until when death comes to one of them. Until when death comes to one of them and he says, Ya Rabb, perhaps you can send me back. Give me one more chance. So that I could go back and do some good deeds. Kalla. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. Wa min waraihim barzakhun ila yawmi yub'athun. Allah says, no, it's too late. It's merely a word that he utters, a wish that he makes that has no reality to it. And Allah says, and between them and the dunya is a barzakh, a barrier that will be placed there forever until the day that they are resurrected. My dear brothers and sisters, has a time not come for us to wake up from our heedlessness? Has a time not come for us to realize that the way in which we are living our lives in the disobedience of Allah and this heedlessness, it's not worth it. And soon it will come to haunt us sooner than we think. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْ قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say to them, O Muhammad, that this death that you try to run away from, that you're constantly trying to evade and escape from, it will eventually come and catch up to you. Each and every single one of us lives day in, day out, trying to escape death. But Allah tells us, no matter how long you live for, death will come and catch up to you. And then after that, you'll be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will inform you of what you used to do. We live in this life stuck in a vicious cycle. We wake up in the morning and enter into our daily routine. And before we know it, the day is over. We start the week. And before we know it, it's Friday and the, and the week is over. Like this, 
We live day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, not realizing that all of this will come to an end at a time, at a time when we least expect it, at a time when none of us will anticipate it, when none of us will have any time to prepare for it. So why is it that we are delaying? Why is it that we are delaying our devotion to Allah and returning to Allah in repentance for a time that may never come? And so you still have a chance. The past is behind you. The future is not in your hands. But what is in your hands is your present, is today. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere and repentant heart and change your life before it's too late. هذا وصلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على نبيكم محمد بن عبد الله كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل في علاه فقال تعالى قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى <تصفيق>